and radical. That would be like saying 3 root 6 equals root 18. Can you do that? That's what you're doing here if you did that. Okay? Because that's negative 1, that's negative 50. That would be like saying that, wouldn't it? You can't do that. So a negative times a negative, well, you're not talking about that in this case. You're talking about a negative 1 times the square root of negative 50. Let's stick with the same exact principles that we, we have over here. We'll have a negative square root. Okay, negative square root of, what am I going to break up the 50 as? Okay, I could do that first, but what am I first breaking off? That's true, right? Right? Take your time when you're first going through this. Right, right now you're just learning it. You probably never ever saw this before. So don't rush through it. I mean, there's no sense in doing that and getting wrong answers, right? Take your time when you're first learning this stuff. After a while, I promise you, by next week, it's going to come so easy to you, it's not going to be a problem. You'll be able to do a lot of this in your head. Right now, go slow. So, the negative stays. Let's split that up. Square root of negative 1 times the square root of 50. Notice how I haven't even dealt with that negative. It's actually going to be outside of our problem the entire time. We're not even going to do anything with it. You're going to see this. This, we just split it up like we've done in the previous problems. So far, so good? Okay. How much is that? This right. Well, I know this is a negative. How much is that? So the negative is here. This is an i. And the square root of 50, the square root of 50. Can you split up the square root of 50? What was it? 25. So we're going to get 5 root 2. Do you see the 5 root 2? Remember this is square root of 25 times 2. That's what we're getting the 5 root 2. We have negative i times 5 root 2. Raise your hand if you could get down that far on your own. Yes, no? Are there any questions on that before I could continue? All right. We're going to write this just a little bit better. Remember here how our whole numbers come first? Our radicals come second? That's a negative. So what you can write this as is negative 5i root 2. Negative 5i root 2. Same principles. Whole number would come first, then an i, then a root. Weird, huh? Isn't that kind of cool stuff? You're dealing with things that are impossible in, in real numbers. That's kind of interesting. You've never been able to do this before in your life, have you? And now we can deal with something. Would you like to try a couple on your own? Let's do the square root of negative 7 and the negative square root of negative 18. So put those in what we'll call this I form. Put this in I form for me. negative 7. I'm hoping you did this. I'm hoping you split up negative 1 times 7. Did you all see that? So we're just splitting off negative 1. That's the only thing we can do because we've defined the square root of negative 1 as i. That's the only definition I gave you. That's it. So we'll have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 7. Square root of 7, I can't simplify that at all. The square root of negative 1 equals how much? Your answer is i root 7. Raise your hand if you got i root 7. Good, all right. Now, next up. Next up. What are, what are we doing here? Negative, negative, negative. So this doesn't change? No. Okay. What's inside of a radical? Negative 1. Times? 
Good. We're just splitting off the negative one. We have to split off that negative one before we do anything in these problems. Please listen. Anything. Over here, anything. If you have a negative, split it off first before you do anything. Okay. Because those operations we've dealt with don't really apply to the, the negative roots. Or you have to change those into reals before you, you deal with this stuff. Okay, so we know that this is going to be negative square root of negative 1 times square root of 18. We have to slow up that square root of negative 1. The reason why is because we know ever we see the square root of negative 1, we're going to put i. So we have the negative, we have the i, and the square root of 18, I'm thinking that's, that's going to be 3 root 2. Yeah, that's right, 3 root 2. So after everything, on your paper you should have a negative, sure, negative is all the way down, look at that, negative didn't even affect our problem. Three, then an i, then a root two. Would you raise your hand feel comfortable doing at least the i form? All right, I'm expecting now to be able to do this i form every single time. Now, there are some operations we're going to have to do with these imaginary numbers. And the first one we're going to talk about is this multiplication of two roots. Remember, we're only dealing with square roots in this, this section. <clears throat> okay, so we're dealing with these, these roots. Now, here's the thing. I want you to watch up on the board. Just watch with me for a second. If you try to use the product rule in reverse, what this would say is you'd have the square root of negative 2 times negative 7. True. You say, oh, what's a negative times a negative? Then you get square root of 14. All right, all right. Or, could you change those to i? Mm -hmm. Notice how this is going to be i root 2, and this is going to be i root 7. Are you following on that? This one is i root 2. Notice how whenever you see a negative inside that root, all it does is bring outside, and you have an i. I mean, this is, you know, this is going to be negative i root 50, split down to 50, or break down to 50. This is going to be i root 7. This is going to be negative i root 18, split up to 18. So whenever you see the negative inside that root, that is simply an i. Are you, are you okay on getting from here to here? Are you sure? I can show you the steps if you need to, but all, all I'd be doing is breaking up negative 1, square root of negative 1 is i, then we have a 2. Times, this will be i root 7. Do you agree? Now, I need you to understand what this actually means. This means i times root 2 times i times root 7. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. Multiplication is called associative because you can move around those little factors and it's still the same thing. For instance, 3 times 2 times 5 is the same thing as 2 times 3 times 5. I can reverse those, right? Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. What that means is that this really could be written as i times i times root 2 times root 7. Do you agree with that? Yeah. That's true. It's a true statement. How much is i times i? i squared. i squared times root 2 times root 7. Okay, this is the weird part. Watch on the board. Root 2 times root 7, you know for a fact that you can put those things together, right? Mm -hmm. Square root, square root. Positive numbers inside. You know this is going to be the square root of 14. Right? Mm -hmm. How much is I squared? Mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's two things to be tattooed on your brain. It's going to be painful. Okay, tattooed. The first one is that the square root of negative 1 equals I. You've been doing fantastic with that. That's got to be memorized. The second one is just as important. How much is I squared? Mm -hmm. You have to memorize that. That means every time you see this, you're going to write that. Every time you see this, you're going to write that. You with me? Every time. So whenever you see, I, how much is I squared? Negative 1 times. How much is negative 1 times root? Negative root 14. Whoa! Wait a second. Which one's right? Which one's right? The only thing we fail on this one, the only thing that we succeeded on this one, was the product rule. You see, when I defined the product rule, it was not defined for imaginary numbers. 
It was defined for real numbers. So what this means is that in order to really use all the stuff we've been doing, I hope you're listening here, in order to use all the stuff you've just learned in every previous chapter, you have to change it into real parts. This is now a real part. That's now a real part. I mean real number in the real system, okay? Here, this wasn't. I didn't change those to reals yet. This operation is not defined for imaginary numbers for the product rule. You can't just multiply them like you would a real. They're not reals. It's not defined. So this part failed us. That's actually not true. You can't do it. You have to change to I form first and then do the math. So is it root 14 or negative root? It's negative root 14. We know that this is all true. We know that's all true. This is the true part. Did you see the point? You've got to change the I form first. And this is absolutely crucial for you to identify every single time you see it. You cannot mess that up. Let's try, uh, let's try a few more together. We'll do three more together. I'll give you a couple on your own. Then we'll finally get into complex numbers and look at what those things do. That'll be a fun part. That's good. I think you, I think you will really like the comp I um, promise you'll really like the complex numbers. I just like them. <laughs> Some of you might not. But I like them. Think calculators I'll like them enough for all of us, all right? OK, good. We're good. Okay, first thing is to multiply these and get positive 25, or first thing is to change to I form. Which one? Every time you see a negative square root, you are going to change it to I form first. That's what I've been saying this whole time. So, the square, can you identify how much the square root of negative 1 is? How much is this over here? So, I know that's an I. Okay, very good. Now, the square root of negative 25, how much is the square root of negative 25? This is going to give you the I. This is going to give you the 5. You should get 5i out of that. Not the square root of 5, but 5i. Do you see why? Mm -hmm. We've actually done this problem before. Look back at your notes. We did the square root of negative 25. This is 5i. 5i five I time, five I times i. How much is 5i five times i? 5i five squared. OK, so 5i five, five squared. How much is i squared, everybody? Negative 1. I could actually write it 5 times negative 1 if you'd like. I squared is negative 1. That's going to be negative 5. This answer is negative 5. We're going to write negative 5 in there. So it's just converting imaginary numbers into real ones? And we're converting um, negative square roots into imaginary numbers. They, they are representing the same thing. We're just writing it a little different. This still is a this still is a square root, right? And that still is a square root. This is the square root of negative one. This is the square root of negative one. All those principles of roots that we've dealt with work. If they are roots, you're just writing them as eyes. First thing, tell me. 